All right, guys. So I'm going to tell you, man, the left's attitude towards black conservatives is really telling. If the response to his speech on Twitter and all the racial slurs that were trending against Tim Scott didn't tell you enough, just pay attention to how the talking heads talk about Tim Scott. It, it tells you everything you need to know. And in particular, <laughs> resident fake black woman, uh, <laughs> Joy Behar on The View, basically tries to lecture Tim Scott, who's a black Republican, on racism in America. Take a look. Bipartisanship is an obsession with the Republicans right now that Biden is not reaching across the aisle, okay? And yet, when he says, Biden, we're on track to cutting child poverty in half, you look around that chamber and nobody on the Republican side is standing or clapping. Does that mean that they are for child poverty? When he says that he wants clean water and Kevin McCarthy is sitting on his hands and not reacting, does Kevin McCarthy like dirty water? Maybe he should, uh, you know, campaign on that. Dirty water for everybody. As far as and then the other thing I have to say is I thought it was brilliant. I thought Biden was incredibly a warm and, and presidential and just great. And to see those two beautiful, intelligent, brilliant women behind him makes me feel like a real... I just felt wonderful. Now, Tim Scott, he, he, he does not seem to understand, and a lot of them don't seem to understand, the difference between um, a racist country and a systemic and systemic racism. They don't seem to get the difference. Yes, maybe it's not a racist country. Maybe Americans, the majority, are not racist. But we live in a country with systemic racism. We discussed it this week again already about housing and about education and, 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 and all of the things that are important to people. And, um, and, and the fact that Tim Scott cannot acknowledge this is, 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 is appalling. How can you go out there and say that when you just said two minutes ago that you were the, the object and the, vi the victim of discrimination? And then he says that this is not a racist country. At least acknowledge that there is systemic racism. That's what I wanted to hear from him, and he didn't say it. Y'all notice how at one point she was like praising Kamala and Nancy Pelosi being in the background. Oh, my God. So great women. It just makes me feel like a real... And she didn't finish what she was saying. I mean, I was wondering what she was leading to here, considering how, um, you know, she did blackface and she low key thinks she's a black woman. Right. So I wonder if she was about to say the N word. Right. She probably was it's probably what she was thinking. But it's funny because she gets on Tim Scott. But yet, isn't Kamala the one that's responsible for locking up all the black people in California for just smoking weed? Didn't Tulsi call her out on that? OK, isn't Pelosi responsible for blocking the stimulus package? Right. When we needed more stimulus for this country, like when we actually needed it back in July, August, September, October, right? Isn't she the one responsible for that? It's funny how these people never have any smoke for these Democrats who actively work against the people that they claim to care about so much. Guys, th this is the daddy mentality that the Democrat Party has with black folks. It really is. It's the I know better than you mentality and don't try to tell me what's best for you when i know what's best for you tim scott you can't tell me as a fake black woman right really a white woman liberal white woman who wants to be black that there's no racism in this country right you can't tell me that the country's not systemically racist because i know better than you and, and guys ain't it funny ain't it just funny how every time you look these people who claim not to be racist are always trying to tell black people what's best for them and how to live their lives and how the world is okay tim scott who admitted to a national television audience that hey you know what i experienced some discrimination as a black person right I i've experienced individual acts of racism but that doesn't mean that the country is racist to me guys that is a very moderate statement right it's one of those things where it's like well he's trying to appeal to those on the left Right, that, that, that are so convinced that black people are being victimized in the country, that we're being shot and killed in the street by police officers, that the whole system is racist against us. You go into the grocery store and you're being systemically oppressed, 
Okay, you walk outside, you're being systemically oppressed. You take a dump, you're being systemically oppressed. That's what the left says. It's in all faucets of our society. And Tim Scott tries to hand them a bridge. He tries to say, okay, I'm not going to say that the country's racist overall, but I am going to say that, you know what? Yeah, I've experienced some individual racism in this country. But to people like Joy Behar, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You have to fall in line or else you ain't black. Right? Just like Joe Biden said, you ain't black if you don't agree with me. A non-black person, by the way. Okay? I, I, I just love how these Democrats and these leftists want to tell black people what racism is. Right? They, they just want black people to be victimized so bad because when somebody's a victim, right? You can sell yourself as a savior. Hey, I'm here to save you from victimhood. But first, you must convince that person that they're a victim. If that person does not believe that they're a victim, if they believe that they can work hard in this country and achieve just as much as any other person in this country, a.k.a. Uh, Obama, Kamala, all these other black people that are super successful, Tim Scott, Ben Carson, okay, Herman Cain, I'm naming conservatives, and Democrats, okay? Very successful people. Robert F. Smith, a black billionaire that's in private equity. I mean, you got you got people like Nas that's making money doing venture capital deals, investing in companies like Coinbase. Venture capital. There are black people out here that are being successful and that are getting ahead in life and are not being held down by the so-called systemically racist system. But the difference is, is that they made good choices, right? They made good choices. They decided to invest their money. They decided to work hard. They decided to climb up the ladder. They didn't let racism hold them back. And that's why I hate this narrative so much. I hate this narrative. When you try to tell people that you're victimized, why even try, right? When I was in corporate America, I had to do a lot of job interviews with white folks, right? I'm in the South, okay? But one thing I did not do when I went to a job interview is that I never, ever, ever let my race play a factor. I never did that. I always looked at myself as the best candidate, and I'm the best candidate because of what's on my resume, what I did in school, and the work that I put in. I never said I'm at a disadvantage because I'm black. I've never thought that way. And I've made the subconscious decision not to think that way because I know that that will hold me back in the interview, right? It will make me feel bad about myself. It will have me thinking things like, oh, is this person racist? Does this person not want to hire me because I'm black? Never crossed my mind doing a job interview. And I feel like that's the mentality people have to adopt. We cannot have a mentality that the system's holding us back because that mentality makes it so a lot of people don't even try. A lot of people just wait for the government to fix the system instead of going out there and taking what you work for. Nobody's giving you anything. You have to take what you work for. And all these systemically racist laws that they love to talk about, right? They can't name one, right? She can never name one. The main one that they love to name that's not on the books anymore is redlining. But they always forget to mention that redlining was started under FDR, right? And the irony in this is that the progressives and the Democrats praise FDR. Biden's like FDR. He is a new FDR. We've all heard that. We all heard that Biden's the new FDR. Well, I guess it would be accurate because Biden is the one that responsible for the crime bills. He's the architect of the crime bill, okay? So he kind of like is like FDR in that sense. <laughs> Trying to govern progressively and also responsible for the so-called systemic racism that all you guys complain about. But I'm not surprised because this is the same exact thing they did to Kim Classic. It really is. Same exact thing. She goes on the show and because she's a conservative that happens to be black, they treat her like dog shit. They treat her like dirt. Sonny Holston lets Joy Behar go in on Kim Classic. Because she's a black conservative, right? Like, that, that's how they do. They're passing out black cards, okay? They're passing out black cards. They call it inviting to the cookout. They, you letting white folks determine who's invited to the cookout. <laughs> that's what's happening. They always want to talk about that. They're letting white people hand out black cards. 
That's what they're doing. That's how silly this is. And they low key tried to do the same thing with Van Jones. When Van Jones was like, yeah, I work with President Trump on criminal justice reform, right? Like, I, I, I congratulate Trump for working on that. I don't agree with Trump on everything, but you know, we, we work together on this. So he gets credit for that. Nope, not good enough, right? You don't agree with them 100%. Sonny Holston goes in on Van Jones. They get mad at Van Jones because Van Jones has one independent thought. The man doesn't agree with 90% of what Trump does, but he agreed with Trump on criminal justice reform. Which, okay, by the way, again, it's helping fight against the systemically racist system that they complain about so much. Again, it's the same thing with Tim Scott's police reform bill. Something that is helping fight against the systemically racist system that they complain about so much. Nope. It came from a Republican. It came from a conservative. Can't have it. Can't deal with it. It's not good enough. <laughs> Don Lemon, right? Don Lemon has one independent thought where he uh, is basically, you know, defending police. Nope, they got to go in on Don Lemon. They got to tell you why Don Lemon is wrong, right? Y'all see the pattern here? It's about groupthink and it's about control. That's what it's about. You're not black unless you vote Democrat, unless you think like liberals, unless you're progressive, then you're not black. And, and you got free reign for white liberals to just talk all the smack in the world they want about black conservatives, even in the most racist way possible. They don't even care. They don't even care. But again, guys, this is just an example of the daddy mentality that the democrat party has with black folks right they think that black people are children and that we must do everything they say and we must think like them otherwise you're not black and this is all this is this is just like joe biden saying you're not black so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace